محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله له لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليك سيدي يا رسول الله Welcome back to the decision that we promised you inshallah that we're going to do it's the Hajj session the Hajj workshop and it is the step by step how to do Hajj and it is so important and I just wanted to to let the sisters know that if they wanted to come forward you know in front of the hall uh, like next to Auntie Maryam in case if they wanted to see what we are going to do they wanted to have some questions so they can come and, sh and join us next to Auntie Maria, inshallah, Rabbil Alami. And I just wanted to, inshallah, make here the, the announcements about this session is so important to know at least the, the one of the p pillars of your deen, one of the, the essential pillars of your deen, which is Hajj. And uh, of course, we have lots of details when we talk about Hajj in terms of you know the, the the islamic rulings and to cover each and every point that session might ha might have four or five hours okay but just i will concentrate on the the most important parts and the major parts that we wanted to cover inshallah i will hand you some of the the tips that you are going to look and and, and, and see what are the steps that we are going to, to have. But before I hand you, I have a little bit of introduction. And inshallah, just wanted to tell you that we will keep all the questions inshallah till the end. In case if you wanted to ask any question, keep it till the end of the session. So inshallah, we will have a certain time for only answering the questions inshallah Rabbil Alameen. So are you ready, inshallah? Yes. yes. Inshallah. Are you excited? Yes. Inshallah, yes. Rabbil Alameen. Okay. So we have three types of hajj. The first one is ifrad. Ifrad to intend to do hajj only. Number two, it is called Quran or ikran to do Hajj and Umrah in one ihram. The third one is tamattu' and tamattu' means enjoyment. To do Umrah and Hajj in two ihrams. And the most common type which is tamattu' enjoyment. And most of people who are coming from outside Mecca outside Saudi Arabia now, they are doing tamattu. Yes, some of the people of Mecca are doing ifrad, just hajj, with one ihram and that's it. That is why we will focus today and concentrate on <coughs> explaining the tamattu one, which is like 90% of people are doing tamattu. Okay, you got it? And number two, I want to explain the term ihram. What is the meaning of ihram? Ihram to be in a status or such a way, such a position that you made it upon yourself that the things which is halal became what? Haram. That is why it is called a state of ihram. So you make by yourself, by your own will, O oh Allah, I am now, right now, in a state of ihram, the things that I used to do it as halal, now upon myself it became haram. You get it? So that is, that is the technical term. And the word ihram, it has certain restrictions to follow so you can fulfill that word, ihram. And by the way, ihram is by intention, not when you put the garments on. For example, now 
for the, 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 the teaching purpose, I will put that garment, the ihram, on. That, is that mean that I am in a state of ihram? Yes. No. Because it is just for without intention. Without intention. Today is what? Today is the 8th of the Hijjah. What we call that day? At-Tarwiyah. Okay? It is the day of preparation. And normally, right now, our brothers and sisters in Hajj, they are right now sleeping in Mina. And we will come to that point. They are hours away from starting the day of Arafah. And inshallah, we will come to the steps that we are going to, to, to know how that works. And the ihram, it is the status that you put by intention, even if you did not put the clothes on or the garments on. So the, the ihram starts with intention. Even if somebody, like by mistake, forgot to put the ihram on the garments, but he intended, that means he technically started the hajj, but actually for missing, putting the ihram, it has a certain ruling, which is to give the fidya, and that we will explain, or is a, like a compensation for doing that mistake, which will explain later, inshallah. But I just wanted to give you the definition of ihram. And the ihram starts with certain geographical locations. What we call it? Miqat. Miqat. Allahu Akbar. Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam assigned five locations for whoever, whomever comes to Mecca. Whenever he comes to that location, he should, from that place, he should start or announce verbally the intention. And Hajj is the only pillar that you must, M-U-S-T, that you must pronounce, utter, and announce clearly with your voice the intention. You must utter it. You must say it, whatever the language that you have, in Arabic, in Urdu, in English, whatever. And it is the declaration to show the greatness of Hajj. And now I am about to come to the Miqat. For those who, I will talk specifically for those who are traveling from the United States. Most of people have two things. Number one, they might travel to Jeddah, from, from here to Jeddah or to Medina. So if you are traveling from here to Jeddah, the Miqat, the location that you should start your Ihram from, it is almost five, seven minutes before landing. And they will, the pilots will announce that we are about to come to that, to the Miqat, to the location. So can I do it before? Yes. Can I do it 10 minutes before landing? Yes, of course. But not after passing the miqat that you start your niyyah, which is, that is something wrong. And one of the things that we need to understand that you could start earlier, like if your, your flight will, the last, the last connecting flight will be from Dubai, for example. Okay, from whatever. Can I do the, the ihram from there before the, the flight takes off? Yes, you can start your ihram from that place. And ihram, like, like th that is so important because lots of people got confused. They got busy, they just put the ihram, the garments on without uttering the niyyah. What I wanted to highlight today that the niyyah, which is the most important part, not putting the garments, of course, 
to do both, which is, which is the right thing to do, but the most essential part is the, your intention, to say it. So now, we said that we will talk about what? Which type? Tamattu. Tamattu. See, brother Abdul Basit is following, mashallah. No, no, it's not sleeping. <laughs> not sleeping. That's not the day that you should sleep. Okay. Tamattu. What is tamattu? That I will have the enjoyment, the luxury, that I will have the ihram on. Then I will do my umrah, and then I will take off the ihram. I will take off the ihram. Then I will start a new ihram for the hajj. Means I have a certain period of time inside Mecca that I will have no ihram on it. I will be out of the restrictions of ihram. I will enjoy that time. So the enjoyment of not being restricted by the ihram, that is the word tamattu. You are enjoying what? Enjoying the, 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 the luxury uh, and, and the easiness of not having the restrictions of ihram during that period between the umrah and the hajj. You got it? So now we will, alhamdulillah, we imagine that we will be reached to Jidda, so 10 minutes, 7 minutes before landing. That is the Miqat. Most of people will go to Medina. Medina outside the borders of Miqat. So you do not need to have ihram on in Medina. What you do actually, you stay in Medina two, three days, you visit the, 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 the message of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you enjoy your time in Medina, and I promise you, that the time that you will spend on in Medina, you will never, ever, ever, ever forget. Right? Yes. Then, when, when, you try, when you start moving from Medina towards Mecca, you will come to the point which is called Abiyar Ali. Abiyar Ali. That is the location. All the buses will stop for the Miqat, so you will find lots of restrooms, then you will find lots of showers, then you will be ready for putting the ihram on. Number one, you will do the intention. Number two, sometimes you might take a shower before you put the ihram on, and then you will be ready for putting your ihram on. And once you set the intention, you, you put the ihram on, you will have nine things that it is prohibited to do. Are you ready? Yes. Nine things. Number one, cutting, shaving, trimming your hair. Cutting, shaving, trimming your hair. And of course, to do that intentionally, if something dropped, that does not count. Combing your hair, that is allowed. And if, if somebody is sleeping and he found something on the pillow, that does not affect his ihram. Intentionally to cut, trim, or shave your hair from any, any position or any place or any area in the body itself. And number two, cutting nails. Intentionally cutting nails. If something like checked away accidentally, that does not count. Number three, that is only for men. Covering your hair, putting, you know, turban, cap on, hat, covering your hair while you are having your ihram. For men, that is prohibited. But again, that does not mean to get any shade of you. Do not put something connected to your body. Maybe you get umbrella, that is okay. Get some shade, that is okay. Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during his head, he used to get the shade of the tree and he used to sit under the tree. And Bilal, 
Ibn Rabah radiallahu an, he used to help the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and he used to cover Rasulullah by his uh, uh, ihram, like not to cover, touch, no, from the top of Rasulullah to give him some shade. And what I wanted to highlight here, that some people, I'm sorry to say that, they like misunderstood the point of covering the hair. They tell you, you know what? We, we do not need to have anything between our hair and Allah. Like nothing to cover us. And I, I believe that you are so smart to know whom I, I'm talking about. When you visit their, their tents, they have no roof. When you see their buses, no they have no roof in, in the buses. You know, that is why. They completely they misunderstood this point. You see, in the streets of Mecca, the passes are passing by, and it has no cover in it. No, roof. no sorry, no roof in it, which is something wrong. What's prohibited is just to have something connected to your head, something upon your head. But it's halal to find the shade, to put the umbrella or to find any place that you want, you can find a shade. Number four, wearing stitched or sewn, sewn garments. You know, that is only for men. And again, we have lots of people are misunderstanding this point. They think like, you know what? Like I do not want anything that needle had been used in it. While he has his ihram, that he, it has needle used in it. People think, like when we talk about like garments which is not stitched, they think like no way to have any needle work on it, which is wrong. What meant by this, not to have any garments can wrap your limbs can wrap your limbs, can determine like something has sleeves like this, like shirt, jacket on, that is, which is prohibited. When, but when we talk about like that one, no way it has some stitching on it, right? No way. But when we talk about, that's not the, what meant by stitched or saw, like swan, uh, uh, garments, sewn garments, but it is something not to not to determine your your limbs, your arms, your legs, like pants, shirts, shorts, like jackets. That is which is prohibited only for men, not for sisters. And we will come to the sisters later on. But can we wear like sandals or belt that have stitches? Yes. And that is, that is something that does not show your limbs. That is something for protection, like somebody putting a little, little small bag to keep his passport, money, and everything. And when they manufactured this, it has some stitches in it. That does not nullify your head. And number five, which is haram, which is prohibited, putting perfume intentionally and i'm highlighting this word intentionally purposely do not put perfume while you have you are having ihram but sometimes you might have things which have scent on it like soap is that haram no yes we encourage people to have the things which is unscented but in case if you went to a hotel, if you found something, you should avoid. But what about if you are using something, you, if you have dry skin and you got some lotion and it has a little bit, a little bit of scent, like normally in the normal days, you are not using soap to get perfume, right? I, I, I want to put perfume, so I, let me use the soap. No, that's not the the normal way. 
Yes, you should avoid it as much as you can. But what about if mistakenly, accidentally, you found that? Is that makes your Hajj unified? No. Try to avoid and get, like earlier, the unscented items, whether soap, lotions, whatever. But what happened if something like that accidentally happened that does not affect your ihram as long as you are staying away from putting your the perfume intentionally number six which is hunting of course you will not go to hajj for hunting you are not allowed to hunt in the united states should would be allowed hunting in ihram okay so hunting in in for, for the brothers who like deers and etc. Brother Hamza, mashallah, is expert on that. Okay, so hunting while you have the ihram on is prohibited. Number seven, getting married. Someone fall in love. Ismail is here, mashallah. Habib is here, mashallah. Someone fall in love in Mecca in ihram. While he is in a falling in love, yes, of course, we have like things bigger than this to think about, to worry about. Okay, but if, if somebody fall in love in Ihram, we tell him, be patient till you finish your Hajj because getting married, you know, if, if, if our brother, I will not say your name, otherwise you will be in trouble. If, other bro if our brother started to think about other wife, okay, the second one. And uh, we tell him, no, be patient till you finish your ihram because getting married, getting married, like the nikah, is prohibited during the time of ihram. That is number seven. Number eight, touching your spouse with desire, with passion, with, you know, the, 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 the feelings, okay? That is, like, some people, again, misunderstand this point because they think just only touching. No. If you want to guard her, protect her, hold her hand, you pass the road, protect her from people are pushing. That is how to be a man, okay? That is how to be a real man. And that is not prohibited at all. But just to touch with desire. That is which is prohibited. Number nine, which is the most dangerous point. Having intimacy. Private relationship with your spouse. That is prohibited during ihram. And pay attention to, to what I'm going to say. Anything from the eight points that I mentioned you can do compensation, fidya, and you can fix your hajj, fix the mistakes that you made, except that one. If somebody did that, that nullifies the hajj, and you have to come back next year, inshallah, to do your hajj. So be aware of that point. That will cost you a lot. You pay too much money, to get out of your job, or get a vacation, you travel, then you waste all of that. All of that. Be aware of that point because that nullifies, that nullifies your hajj, okay? And backbiting during the, 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 the session, during the lecture of the Imam is haram, okay? Okay, alhamdulillah. Just wanted to say the, the nasiha. Okay, why, why these nine things are haram? Why these nine things are haram? Because actually when you put your ihram on, what, what, how the, what the ihram represents? Ihram represents the shroud, the kafan. When we die and we got resurrected, we come out of our graves and all of us with the same shroud, we are going heading to a certain place to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that means what? You have issues which are bigger than 
things are bigger to worry about than anything else than cutting your hair, beautifying, beautifying yourself, putting perfume. You are putting yourself in that status to tell yourself, you know what? I have things more important than calming, than like calming is halal, like cutting my hair, cutting my nails. I have things better than this. Before I show you the easiest way, because lots of people are doing complicated issues when they put their haram. They want to find a belt, someone to get the like, uh, needle, someone getting something, and he, he's like, he's not aware of, like he, he wanna, he wanna like things, like wanna somebody help him to put the ihram on, and sometimes he's putting the ihram on the wrong way, he cannot even walk. It is hard for him to walk with the ihram, eating, drinking, on the way, like on, while he is doing Hajj. So I will show you pretty easy, simple way to put the ihram without putting anything extra in your ihram, and that will be inshallah the next part. But for the sisters, again, they have no restrictions related to the garments. They can wear whatever they want, any color, like as long as it is modest, as long as she is wearing her hijab, but the proper hijab, right? Because some of them put in hijab and like have half of the hair uncovered. That's not hijab, okay? Let's go to the, 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 the proper point. As long as she has the white, proper color, proper hijab, like she's okay. She can wear shoes, <coughs> she can wear things with sleeves, things with like uh, pants, uh, uh, pants under the abaya, the, 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 the dress, whatever she has, she has no restriction. Of course, she will cover her hair. That means like the, the hat or the cap section that we talked about, that does not apply for the sisters. But cutting the hair or, you know, trimming the hair, cutting nails, like having the, the private relationship, touching with desire. All these things are applied for both of, of, of brothers and sisters. But now, let me just try to... Yeah, this is what, as the clothes in, uh, of Kaaba is scented. Also Hajar, yes. Yes, you can, is it permissible to touch the Kaaba and the, the, the black stone is, you know, scented and all this stuff? Yes, it's permissible, but try, try your, your, your best to avoid the scented issues or the items, but if that happened, like, without being, like, unintentionally, that does not affect your ihram. I will put now the ihram on, show you the easiest way to put the ihram on, then we will come back to do the first thing after ihram when we came, when we entered to Kaaba, which is tawaf. I will explain that we have three types of tawaf. Three types of tawaf, okay? Or three names for tawaf. So let's, let's go now and start putting the ihram on. So the ihram has two Ihram has two uh, parts. The first one is called Izal. The other one is Rida. So Izal, that's the, the like for the, 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 the other or the half of the body. In the middle. Okay. And the Rida, that is from the top. So now I will try to put the one in, like in the middle and that's very easy and simple. So what you are going to do, now all of you see? Mm -hmm. So now you put these two sides like that way, okay? 
on, on the side, okay, on this side, and then you put it that way, you see now, then you fold it that way, and you fold it from here, that's it, that's very simple, you see, I will repeat that again, okay, that's very simple. Now we have, it's very tight, do not, do not worry, you are not going to lose it, and you see now, you see, because just of the jalabiya here, because when you put it on that direction, that allows your leg to be like straight. Now you, it's easy to go anywhere and to walk, do tawa, do not worry, you are not going to lose it, okay? That is how to put that part. Then, there is that, on the top, on the top. This one, you are putting your ihram, this rida, like that way, and you cover yourself properly, as much as you can, if you want. That is the easiest way to put that, if you want to put that on, on your like, shoulder like this, that is great to cover your stomach, and that's it. That is, that is how to put your ihram on, okay? Now, you might ask me, what about when we are doing tawa? Okay. We have a certain part, it is called ittiba, ittiba, to show so the right shoulder. That is only in tawa. Is that in the whole tawa? In the, the first three, like, rounds, and most of people are doing the first three rounds with the tibak and they will get to, to put it back, which is, you know, something okay to do well. So how, how should you make it? You should take your right side like this and try to put it here and that's it. You are okay to go, you know, that's freely. Now it's okay to go and pray with it, and you can see it's free. Now you can, you can while you are walking, stretch your leg, and not problem. At all. Once you finish the first three, like rounds around the Kaaba, put them back. That's it. See, that's very simple, very easy. Now you are in a state of ihram. You wanna me repeat this the other part or you are okay with that? You are okay. Yeah. Okay? So it's what very simple. Underwear. Yeah? Underwear? Huh? What about the underwear? No underwear? No. No, 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 no. And some people are selling things which is not like a very wide one, but it's it's not preferable. It's not preferable. Like, do not get it because you do not actually need it. And in that way, keep you, inshallah, safe and, and, and do not afraid of losing it, inshallah. Okay? So, here is again. Put that on that side, you see? On that side, stretch it. And then, and of course, there is no hat or red cap on the arm, right? So that way, then you fold that one, and then you start getting folding it like that way. And by that side, like it's easy. You do not need anyone to help you to put the hand on, and it's not hard to walk with with it. If I do not have my dress, my jalabiya, that would be much easier when you put the hand on. You got it now? So here is that 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 ihram, and now you put the ihram on. You put the ihram on, and now you will move to the tawaf. What is what is tawaf? Tawaf to do like to, to do around the Kaaba. Now I will give you some of these things. Please, if you have like two brothers are sitting next to each other, they can yes, you can distribute it. If you have two brothers are sitting next to each other, just take one because we have the sister in the back wanted to follow. 
and they will distribute it. And, and for the brothers here on Zoom, I will, I will share with you the page that they are, that they took right now. So, uh, smile. So here is the page that they received in the message, so you can follow with, with, with us what they are watching. Now, this is the, these are the steps of Hajj. We have how many, how many names for Tawaf or types of Tawaf? Three. Now I put the Ihram, I entered Mecca. The first thing that I need to do when I enter Mecca, is to do what? Tawaf. And Tawaf is the Sunnah exactly as you pray two rak'ahs when you come to the masjid. Yes. Okay? It is called Tawaf what? Tawaf al-Qudum. Tawaf al-Qudum, which is number two. You see? This is number two. Now, number one, enter Ihram at Miqat. When you come to the location, in our case, what we call it, whether in Jeddah, to 10 minutes before landing, or if you are coming from Medina, it is from, called Abiyat Ali. And number two is Tawaf, Tawaf al Qudum. That you, yes, you can get them in the back. That you just came. Qudum, Qudum means I just came. I just came. Yes. And you remember, when you put the Iqran, you say to Allah, when you put the ihram with the intention, yes. you say, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ عُمْرَةً مُتَمَتِّعًا بِهَا إِلَى الْحَجْ لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ عُمْرَةً مُتَمَتِّعًا بِهَا إِلَى الْحَجْ Oh Allah, here I am, here I am, لَبَّيْكَ, here I am. I intend to do umrah and I will stay till hajj. Means I will enjoy the, 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 the being out of the Quran till Hajj. And we will talk again when are you going to put the Quran on after your Umrah. So, step number two, you will do Tawaf. What is uh, and how to do Tawaf? Tawaf is to do seven times around the Kaaba. But be aware, it has certain pillars. If you have extra, you can give it. If you, have, if you get extra, you can get it. So, Tawaf, I need you to pay attention for this. Tawaf has pillars and sunan. Tawaf has pillars. Lots of people are getting mixed. They are mixing with the pillars and the sunan. Some, some stuff, Allah has made it sunnah, and they think it's a pillar. Number one. To have the intention, is that pillar or sunnah? Rukim. That is pillar, fard, wajib. And number two, to get purified, purified, to get the wudu. To get, huh? To get the wudu, which is fard, which is wajib. And number three, covering your private parts. That is fard. Number four, to get the Kaaba on your left side. To get the Kaaba on your left side. That is far, wajib. So you can, uh, like the opposite direction of the clock. So on the left side, starting from where? From the Hajar, from the, the, the black stone, and putting the Kaaba on your left direction, then you start the tawaf. When you finish by coming back to the black stone, that is one. And then around, coming back, that is two. Then you, you turn, you're coming back. And we have on the first three, on the first three rounds, we have something, it is called ramel. Ramel. What is ramel? You come between the, between the certain, Signs and you try to make it faster, faster, and of course we will talk in, in the sa'i about this ramal too. But in tawaf you have in the first three rounds you have ramal, 
And what are you going to do? Seven times. Of course, we have certain details about Rukn al yamani when you, when you receive uh, uh, the Rukn, the, the when you see the, the, the side, the side of the Kaaba, which is called Yamani, you need to say some du'as and, and some verses of the Quran, but Yes, Rabbana, atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi al-akharat hasana, wa qina adab al Seven times, and we have another, the last wajib, the last ruku, pillar, it is called muwala. al muwala means is to do that continuously, like after, like do not do two, three, then go to sleep for two days and come back to continue. You know, the only exception, if you lost your wudu, if you lost your wudu, then you can get wudu back and come to continue. But not like, like uh, two, three days or two nights or five, six hours and then you continue tawaf. Okay? What's the name of that tawaf again? Qudum. Tawaf of coming. Tawaf of Qudum. Okay? This is the Rukm. But let me tell you the Sunnah of Tawaf. You know the, the Ittubak to cover the right shoulder? That is Sunnah, not Farah. Okay? Because why I highlighted this issue, when I was doing my Hajj, I saw lots of people. They, 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 they forgot. They didn't know. And then somebody is chasing them. Brother, you, you missed Tawaf. That's not the right thing. That your tawaf is not acceptable. No. I need you to get the education. So you are aware of what you are doing. Is there a reason for that? Uh, it's it's a, a humiliation. It's a sign of humility, like humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's just like, oh Allah, I left everything. You know, sometimes when you have a person, a very poor person, and he has some like holes in, you know, it's a kind of showing humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't there, you have to do two rakah at the Imam Ibrahim? Yes, this is, yes, again, this is one of the sunan of tawaf, not wajib. You get it? Not wajib. So the first one is showing the right shoulder. Number two, ramal that I told you about to, 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 to run like faster, not running, okay? Like not racing, it's not, it's not just a little bit faster. Trotting. Yes, and number number three in the sunnah, to touch or to kiss the hadith, the, the, the black stone. And I can tell you lots of pride here. You know, just I told you about it, and I remember now when somebody like pushed me with, 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 with his elbow, Mashallah, he was from Africa. <laughs> he was from Africa. <laughs> now I feel the pain, you know? Yeah. After how many years, I still feel the pain here in this room. I stayed like, like three, four days. I couldn't even breathe like properly. And subhanAllah. So do not go to the older crowd. Just that's a, that is sunnah. To touch or to kiss the hajar. It's enough to point like out from the long, like from a, a, a distance, to say, like to, to point just to Al Hajab, and that is Sunnah. And of course, I, I, I should remember here the statement of Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab, عنه, when he kissed the Hajab, when he kissed the black stone, he said, Wallahi inni a'lam annaka hajabin la tanfa'u la tadur. I swear by Allah that I know that you are just a stone cannot bring any benefit or any harm to me. And just the only reason that I'm doing that, that Rasulullah had kissed you. I'm following Rasulullah sallallahu and that tells you about the total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the pure worship and we do not associate any partner with Allah. What is so like sunnah is to do dhikr and dua Recite some Quran while you are doing tawab, not problem, and also to finish the seven rounds and then to come 
to the, 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 the back line, behind the place, the status of Ibrahim, السلام, the, the stone of Ibrahim for the footprint of Ibrahim, السلام, Maqam Ibrahim. And to pray two rak'ahs, that is sunnah. Lots of people think that is wajib. That is sunnah. And that, that does not mean, I tell you, do not do it. No, I urge you to do that, but I wanted you to know what is the difference. So that was the first tawaf that we did. Can you go back now to the steps that I gave to you? My brothers and sisters, now it is your, your time to look at the screen in front of you to see what the brothers here are watching. Number three, number three. Now you will do sa'i between Safa and al Maru. How many times? Seven. Seven. Seven times. And again, lots of people think Safa and Maru. Coming back, that is one. No. From Safa to Marwa, that is one. From Marwa back to Safa, two. That is two. Okay? Then from Safa to Marwa, that is three. From Marwa back to Safa, that is four. Seven times. And you will find two signs. Two lights, green lights. You need to do what? Fast. fast. Uh, to walk faster fast. in this time, in this. And, and that is for all the seven times. You, now you see, it's different than the Tawaf. What we did, Raman in Tawaf, three, the first three. three. Yeah. But in Sa'i, that is for the seven times between the two green signs, lights. Number four. Okay, now. Now. Okay. I want you to focus on that because that's not mentioned here in the steps. You finish Sa'i. And then you will go outside where the barbers are and you will trim your hair. You will trim your hair. And then you will take out you will take off your rihram. Now you did Umrah. Now you did Umrah. So after Sa'i, go outside, trim your hair, do not shave. Because after one week almost, you need to shave. Lots of people, like your hair is not going to grow in four or five days. Just trim after the Umrah. And the sisters, she can take part of her hair and cut a little bit. A little bit, like the tip of the finger. That, that is good. That is enough for the brothers. Trim your hair and keep something, save your hair for the, the, the other time after five or six days. Now, let's say that you are in the fourth day of the Hijjah, fifth day of the Hijjah, and you came to the eighth of the Hijjah, which is today, the day of Tarwiyah. You got the luxury, you take the haram off after Umrah, you enjoy it, you put your, your jeans, your thobe, your jalabiya, your shirt, your, you know, your jacket, you enjoy it. You went to uh, the bake restaurant, you got your food, you got your biryani, chicken masala, whatever, you enjoy it, you got some stuff, you prayed in the haram. Okay, now, Imam, while I do not have a haram, can I do tawaf? Can I do tawaf? While I'm having my jeans, my shirt, my coat, my t-shirt? Yes. You can do a you can sorry, you can do tawaf. Anytime, anytime, no problem. And the tawaf in al haram, almost like salah, means what? You will be rewarded. You will be rewarded a lot by doing tawaf. You pray, the regular prayer, you have time between Dhuhr and Asr, you want to do tawaf, that is great. That is great. Now, which day that we are in? Eighth of the Hijjah. What is the benefit here? 
Now you can do a haram again for Hajj from anywhere you want. You do not need to go back to the special location location to do the to do the ihram. You do not need to go back to Abiyar Ali, for example, to do ihram again. Do it from your hotel, from your from your hotel, from like the middle of the road. If you are in Medina, if you went back to a Medina, can you can I go back to a Medina? If I have four or five days, yes, you can go. Can I visit my relatives and come back on the eighth of the Hijjah? Of course. Of course, not problem. And do ihram from wherever you want, as long as you are in Mecca. Do not reach Mina without ihram. Do not reach Mina without ihram. What is the Sunnah time to do my ihram? Rasulullah Muhammad وسلم, did his ihram in the morning, the eighth of Dhul Hijjah. Most of people, 90% of people nowadays are doing their ihram, starting their ihram before Maghrib time. And my advice to those people who are doing hajj for the, the first time, start before Dhul. Start before Dhuhr. And try to be in Mina early. Most of people nowadays, they reach Mina after Isha. Try to reach Mina early. Because Rasulullah, if, if that is the first hajj for you, do it properly according to the Sunnah. Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Mina, pray Dhuhr, ask Madhr, Isha, and Fajr. You got it? Five times. And he shortened the Salah in Mina. Shortened the Salah in Mina. Dhuhr two, Asr two, Maghrib you cannot short, three, and Isha two, and Fajr of course two. But he shortened this Salah, it can, it can be shortened. You got it? So now, you will move, you will put the ihram on, and once you put the ihram and you say the intention, you utter the intention, now you will say what? لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ حَجْتْ Now, here I am, O Allah, I will do my hajj. Technically, from that time, you are in hajj. You are in hajj. The, the first one was Umrah. And you stayed till the time of Hajj. Now the eighth of the Hijjah, which is today. And now you put a haram on. You remember the nine restrictions? We will start applying the nine restric restrictions again. And what happens now? You will go to, to stay in Mina. To stay in Mina the entire night. What should I do? Take rest. No problem. Sleep, no problem. Pray to Hajj, no problem. Pray Qiyam, no problem. Recite Quran. Engage in lots of istighfar for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No problem. Take some rest because you have the major pillar of Hajj, which is the day of Arafah. Inshallah we will witness that tomorrow. The day of Arafah, now we are in the ninth of Zul Hijjah. When should I move to Arafah, to the mountain of Arafah from Mina? Now we are in step number five, day of Arafah. And that is the major pillar of Hajj. That is why Rasulullah, you, you can memorize this hadith. You can say to anyone, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Al-Hajju Arafah, Sinful Arafah. That is simple Arabic. Al Hajj Arafah means the core pillar, the, the essential pillar of Hajj is Arafah. Whoever missed Arafah, he missed Hajj. So, so save your energy for that day, the day of Arafah. Imam, can I leave Mina? 
before Fajr to reach Arafah early? Yes, you can. Can I leave Mina like one hour before Fajr to reach Arafah early? Yes. Can I move after Fajr? Yes, of course. That's the Sunnah to leave after Fajr. And when you reach Arafah, there I need you to focus and concentrate on the main purpose. Why did you come? The main message of Arafah to be in a state of dua all the day long. Even Salah, Allah removed like the burdens of Salah to save you time so you can engage in dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah had saved you. Imam, what does it mean? You remember we said in Mina to shorten Salah? Right? In Arafah, you shorten and combine Salah. So Dhuhr and Asr, you pray them in the time of Asr or the time of Dhuhr together two and two. And you save your, your day, you save your time. For what? To make a dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, tomorrow, the khutbah of Jumu'ah, I will talk about the virtues of the day of Arafah. So I will keep that for tomorrow in the khutbah, inshallah. Now, that's step number six. Now, you finished the day of Arafah by the Adhan of Maghrib. Of course, you will have almost six, seven, eight million people on Arafah. Eight almost seven, eight million people on Arafah on that day. And all of them, by the time of Maghrib, they will move to where? Who was that? And for those who went for Hajj, I can tell you, this is the most difficult part in Hajj. If I ask you, when you left Arafah, could you tell me, like walking, walking on foot, when did you reach Muzdalifah? I remember. I reached Muzdalifa 11.30 from Maghrib time. I prayed Maghrib on Arafah, then I headed to Muzdalifa, I reached 11.30. Do you remember when did you re reach, doctor? Two o'clock. Two o'clock. Okay. Around that time, 11.30, 12? Okay, where did you sleep? In the open, you know, in the, in the open. You know, and subhanAllah, people are walking faster than the buses. Yes. Right? Yes. So they, they, those who are sitting on buses, they wish if they walk with people. You see, the brother who was walking, he reached like two hours earlier than me. But now there's a train there between Arafat and... Yes. <laughs> yes, that's the train. I, I hope that's safe. But that would not be only for the rich people, okay? Because we're supposed not, not to have segregation or mm -hmm. any discrimination there. And what is the most challenging thing there? To reach to the bathroom, right? Mm -hmm. yep. yeah, that's the most difficult part, yeah, you know? Also, no. You need to, like my advice always to people, stay next to the, the masjid, the masjid al haram You know there is a masjid? Very well. Yeah, I know. But try to stay near to al masjid al haram Masjid, that's my recommendation. I know it's a, it's a longer, longer, because whenever, when you reach the Muzdalifah, you find people are sleeping on the road and you want to avoid them and climb the, the mountain to go from the two sides. And subhanAllah, try to head like your, your way to Mash'ar al-Haram, the Masjid, and stay next to the Masjid or inside the Masjid. That is the easiest part. Now, in Muzdalifa, in Muzdalifa, what's your mission? To collect stones. Stones. stones, okay? And stones, very small, not big ones, okay? Like, the, the, you know the chickpeas? Yeah. The chickpeas? Yes, that size, very small one. Like, tip of your finger, not to get the biggest one. You're not fighting with the actual shaitan, it's symbolic. 
Okay, how many of the stones that you need to collect? That's a math word. Seven days. 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 You know the, the, the greatest the devil, devil, the biggest, the biggest the devil. Okay, the Aqaba al Kubra, al Jamr al Kubra. Seven, the first day. Then, for three consecutive days, each one, each day, twenty-one stone. For each Jamra, seven, three Jamrat, seven, seven, seven. So that's twenty-one. So 21 multiplied by 3, that is 63, plus the 7 on the first, so 70. So that is 70. And like extra, you can get 10 extra in case if something you are you mask or something on your way, get almost like 80 little stones on your little bag next to you. Now, we will move to which day that we have now? In ninth. No, in the tenth. Not the ninth. We are in the tenth of the Hijjah, which is the day of Eid here. So, by which time that should I leave Muzdalifah? Fajr. Pray Fajr, then move to the Mina again. So now, we are we were in the eighth of the Hijj, from Mecca to Mina, from Mina to Arafah, from Arafah to Muzdalifah, then from Muzdalifah back to Mina. Why? To do four things. The first day of Eid, you will do four things. And I want you to study them and understand them like what I'm going to tell you exactly. You will do four things. After two, you will get rid of the minor ihram. After four, you completely free of ihram. Are you paying attention? Yeah. Can you please like, stay a little bit away from the camera, okay? So now, four things you will do on the first day of Eid. The first one, that you will go to throw that stone on the, the biggest one. Seven stones. And then, go to do what? Shaving. Shave your head. Shave your head. Okay? Shave your head. And after the first two, now you can take off your ihram. The third thing, but take off your ihram, but cannot be in private relationship with your spouse. The, 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 the intimacy is prohibited, still prohibited. That is why I call it minor ihram. You get it? The third one, is to do the sacrifice, the hadi, not al-hayna, the hadi, to do the sacrifice. Most of us do not do the sacrifice by themselves. You just pay the, the voucher, the, 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 the coupon, and pay, and you are sure that they, do, they did that on your behalf. That's the third action. What is the fourth? What is the fourth? Tawaf. Al-Ifada, which is Salat. number 10 on the steps. So again, number 6, you stay the night in Muzdalifah. Number 7, let me share it again with the brothers. Number 7, you, you do the stoning for the devil. Number 8, do the sacrifice, which is called Hadi. Number nine, shave your your head. So I, I said. I think 
and you have to do the sacrifice before the sacrifice before shaving. Yes. yes, sacrifice before shaving. Shave your head. You remember that's why I told you do not shave after Umrah. To save it for that time. And number ten, you do tawaf, which is called tawaf al ifada. Tawaf al ifada. You go back to Medina. You remember you was in Mina. You go back to Medina. Sorry. I'm sorry if I messed with the name, okay? Because I have lots of okay. Yes, okay, we will. So tawaf al ifada. Tawaf al ifada in Mecca. You go back to Mecca. You do tawaf seven times. Seven times tawaf, regular tawaf as you did at the beginning. And now you will take off all your ihram. And now you can do sa'i between Safa and Al Marwa. Sa'i between Al Safa and Al Marwa. And then you will go back. You will go back the next day to Mina and stay in Mina for how many days? Another two days. Three. Three. Yes. You remember Allah said, وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْدُودًا فَمَنْ تَعَجَّلَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ وَمَنْ تَأَخَى فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ لِمَنِ اتَّقَى Now we are in the first day of Eid. Now, the second, the third, the fourth day of Eid, this is the Sunnah to stay in Mina. Some people might stay the first day, the second, the third day of Eid, and then they leave. No problem. But the Sunnah is to stay till the fourth day of Eid. And every time, now you take your ihram off, you shave your head. And you did your sacrifice before that. Now you are okay. You're wearing your normal clothes. clothes. And you stay in, in Mina for three days. All what you do in these three days, you do what? Go, throw, and stone it. Three. Three, like three uh, positions, three locations. Each one, seven times, seven stones means total 21 per day and you will do that for three days now technically you're done stoning and everything one thing left one thing left stay as much as you can after that time in mecca enjoy your time and before you leave right before you leave you do one more tawaf, it is called tawaf al wada the farewell tawaf. And that is not a secret to tell you, that is the most difficult tawaf that you are going to do. You feel emotional, you cry, now you are saying goodbye, I'm leaving. You know, you, you feel like, you know, when you stay closer to something very long time and you get used to see Al-Kaaba every day, now you are about to leave. That is why. You do the last tawaf, you prepared your luggages and your group are waiting for you. Two, three hours and we are going to leave. And you are doing the farewell tawaf, that is the most difficult like time. You get emotional, you cry, and you ask Allah, Oh Allah, I ask you to accept my hajj. I know we have lots of things in the middle, but Alhamdulillah, I hope that we finish the hajj step by step. This is technically the last step in your hajj, and then you go to the airport, coming back to your house and to your children. But when you're going to help the devil, how many devils you just meet on your way? Yes, three. No, it's only the tree. Huh? Not the tree. I'm talking about the regular devils. Oh, yes. <laughs>
are you are throwing it, throwing yeah, the regular the devil is hurting you shoot the you, you should you should shoot the the devil, not the human beings. Right. You know? <laughs> I remember a lady, mashallah, was from Egypt. She was hating the shaitan too much. Yeah. She took out yeah, she she off her her slippers, like yeah, the Allah, 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 Inshallah, declare and, and have your sukhul on, have your sukhul inshallah tonight, have the intention inshallah, and come tomorrow, attend Jumu'ah, we will have also by the time of tomorrow, and we will have of course the iftar, all of you, your family, your kids, your wives are invited to do the, to, to attend the iftar in the hall, lots of things inshallah we are going to announce tomorrow. جزاكم الله خيرا بارك الله فيكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته